as you can see, I have the transition up and staple down along the bottom edge into the fiberglass. I use quarter inch staples, quarter inch leg for that. It's just stapled into the fiberglass because there's metal underneath. And underneath here, underneath this, is butyl tape, black butyl tape, because I read online some people talking about how the black stuff is stickier. I don't know, that gray stuff that I took off of the old was pretty nasty. You can see here's the inside of it. I discovered I could not do this myself. I tried this side yesterday by myself and I got started up here and put it in and went in nicely underneath the front cap. I had to do a little prying but it went in fairly nicely. And then as I started to run it down the edge I realized that I didn't have it as straight as I thought because just one or two millimeters off up here angled up or angled down means that by the time you get down to the end you either have a huge Cadillac tail fin or you're dragging the tail. And so I monkeyed around and monkeyed around and monkeyed around with it yesterday and finally got it to a point where I could just leave it. I had it stapled in at that end and had it stapled in up here at this end and I could just leave it. And then today I got some help on this side I had just one helper down on this end and I was on this end on a step ladder and we pulled against each other kind of tug of war kind of thing and lined it up as best as we could along the bottom of that butyl tape and that seemed to work we got it on this side because I had already cut off the ends here and down there and I already cut the end so I only had just an inch on each end to spare I didn't have as much to work with so I had two people helping me on that one another friend came for a while and helped me this afternoon and with one person one person holding this end and one person on a stepladder on the ground you know, holding up that end I was up here on the roof and I started in the middle and worked my way down that way and then worked my way down this way with the staples and then we pulled the staples out because it still wasn't angled quite right and so we adjusted a little bit up here and then we kind of adjusted it down just a little bit down there and we stapled it again a couple just a couple spaces really widely spaced and we discovered it was still too far off so we had to go back up here and adjust it and we had to pull it up here a little bit because it was too far down so we had to pull it up and we finally got it and it still is a little high on that end when it gets to the to the back of the RV but it's not bad it's it's a little high but it will work um, once I get the uh, once I get the edging piece on there it'll cover that all up and once I get the uh, the miraculous Eternabon tape placed over that whole kit and caboodle it'll be sealed up nice and tight snug as a bug in a rug so they tell me that's the plan but uh, if you're ever doing this you definitely need two three people helping you uh, it would be best if, if I had two people on step ladders here and two people on step ladders down there you know like one at the end one at the end and one about quarter way through here and then another one about quarter way through right about here all holding it so that it's right lined up exactly perfect and everybody pulling it taut and then I could have stapled it in and we would have been able to sort it out much much more gooder but as it was, we got it done. I could not have done it without the help of my friends. I tried last night for several hours, and that was... I had a lot of unkind things to say to this uh, aluminum flashing while I was working with it last night. Not much fun. But it's up here now, and it's time to clean up and go home. This is the aluminum flashing that I'm using for the transition. This will get bent over, bent 
it'll get curved over up atop and staple to the roof. For right now, it is just stapled to the wall. I use quarter inch staples, so it's just stapled into the fiberglass, because right behind this fiberglass is a one and a half inch or so square pipe, aluminum or steel, I think it's aluminum. And you can see all the staple holes from the times I put it on and then took it off and then put it on and then took it off, trying to get it lined up myself. But the problem I discovered when I start to bend this over at the top, like this, to bend this down, it pulls these staples out because this is too stiff and so then as it bends over the, the bottom kicks out and pulls the staples out. So I am putting the trim on which is supposed to go on dead last. I'm putting the trim on now just to hold this down so I'm able to bend over the top edge and staple it down. Now this is a horrible mistake under any normal circumstances because then the rubber roof is not able to go underneath this trim and this trim should have butyl tape on the back and then adhere to the rubber roof and then over each screw head you put a little lap seal and then you put the vinyl covers screw covers over the top of it but what I am doing is I'm putting this on now and then I'm I have four inch wide Eternabond tape that I'm gonna go over this with all the way over down into here and this is the slide out awning slide out cover and then it comes out as an awning also and I will tuck that tape down in here as much as possible and then when I'm done with that I will probably put some lap seal in this gap here in between the awning rail and the trim that goes on the body here around the slide out itself. So the Eternabond is going to provide the waterproofing. There is also underneath this on this bottom edge I have butyl tape underneath this along the bottom edge and then this trim will be squishing in that butyl tape so if there is any leakage here it still won't be able to get around if it does get around the Eternabond tape it still is protected it can't you know, for one thing it's that water doesn't flow upwards but if I'm driving and some water does get forced up in there there is butyl tape underneath this protecting it from getting up inside there That's the theory. We will find out over the next few months and next few years how good I am at theorizing. What I have discovered, putting on this new piece of trim here, I decided to buy new, brand new stuff for this side rather than try to clean up 33 and a half feet of gunk off of the old trim. This new trim is drilled for screw holes every four inches. The old trim seemed to be sort of drilled every four or five, six inches, depends on wherever they decided to put the screws in. I'm not quite sure how that worked. I'm guessing they just got it blank with no holes in it at all at the factory. And they had some sort of ginormous machine screwdriver bit that just shoved them in wherever they felt like it. But I was hoping to line these holes up with the old holes and just use the old holes. But that's not the case. So I have to drill it. So I'm using, uh, since these are number 10 sheet metal screws, I'm using a 5 30 seconds bit. And I'm doing two at a time because, of course, I can't do a whole bunch. You know, the farther out I get, if I'm off just a little bit because of the flex of the, the, flex of the trim itself, so I'm drilling two holes and then putting in two screws and then drilling two more holes and then putting in two more screws to hold it tight and that way I can keep a little better eye on which way it's going up or down. You can see I use a little duct tape to hold it up here because I'm working by myself and I don't have anyone to hang on to that end while I work down here and that end would certainly go flopping all over the place if I didn't have it held down with something. You can see that duct tape is starting to come off, and I can't reach it. 
So I better get back to work. As I'm drilling the holes to put in the trim screws here, I reached the point where I was over the window and the window awning. And I do not want all those metal shavings and dust and whatever else falling down behind the window awning or in between the awning rail and the window trim itself or the wall. So I just put a couple strips of duct tape in there and when I'm done, and I covered up the ends here also just to keep any out of the end or out of the bearings and the workings there. When I'm done, I'll just take that off of there and anything that's caught in there will come out instead of falling down behind. And I'm almost to the end. I get done with this strip here. I've got to cut another little piece for right there. And you can see, now that I'm getting close to the end, how the aluminum flashing here rose slightly on the end. It just barely catches the butyl tape that I put in there. But an inch is as good as a mile, as they say. And once I get the trim piece put on there and clamped down, and then put the tape over the top of that, the Eternabon tape over the top of that, that should be just fine. I hope. That's the plan. Back to work. When stapling down this transition, I have found instead of starting at one point and working your way all in one direction, I thought probably best to start in the middle and then work my way up and then work my way back. But as I worked my way up, I realized that the transition was slowly trailing off so that I went farther up and pulled it up and stapled it down and I worked my way back and then I had a wrinkle that I had to staple down. Let's see if I can find it. It should be hard. And uh, you can see here, I had a little bit of a wrinkle that I had to put a bunch of staples in to get it flat. And it's kind of creased weird here, and it's kind of creased a little strangely here. And there's another spot. So when I went back to work on the back half, I decided to try something different and this seems to be working and you see I have staples in here and then I have staples up to you can't really see there you can see them right there and all this has to be stapled down yet so what I'm going to do is I pull this over and hold it down and I'll put a staple in the middle And I'll do a staple in the middle between that staple and the next row here, the next where I've got staples. Put another staple there. And then up here I'll do the same thing in the mid mid range. I'll put a staple in here. And then I'll go in midway in between those. And that way, when I do have, as you can see, it's kind of sticking up just a little bit here. But when I do have that, it spreads it out a little bit. And it's easier to deal with. See now here I'm going to have a bit of a wrinkle. I have to staple it down, but that's okay. It's just a tiny wrinkle. Tiny bubble. Tiny bubbles in the glass. Oh wait, sorry. That was a that's a different video. And to answer your question, yes indeed, there was that many staples in the old one when I pulled it off. Oh, I got the transition on. That is satisfying. Progress. I like progress. Oh. Mess to clean up. Alright, it's going to rain tomorrow, so I have to cover this all up. Get my butt home. To help keep the staples from coming up through the rubber roof, even though it is a liquid rubber roof that I'm applying, and it should seal a little better, a little differently than a regular sheet rubber. 
you can see the staples cutting a little holes in the rubber roof but I'm a big believer in overkill so I have a two inch wide web seal roll from the folks at Eterna Bond and I'm covering up the staples and the edge of the transition where it meets the roof. I've got a homemade roller uh, just a bunch of washers and a couple of odds and ends of junk that I had laying around. I should have just bought the roller. It took me half an hour to put that stupid thing together. For four bucks you can get the roller from Turnabond. This is a four inch wide roll that I cut in half using a razor. I cut it in half while I was still on the roll and then kind of unrolled it as I went. I do not advise doing that. It took a long time and it was a royal pain in the butt. Holy cow, it was, an, it was a lot of work. And of course it wasn't exactly straight as you can see the edges. And the edge down here is a little... Uh, but that's okay, it's all going to get covered up with the rubber roof. But now I am in the process of covering up the staples. Nice to be on the downhill side of things here, not tearing off, putting on. Feels good. Feels good to look at the roof and... Look at that. Ready for... Ready for a coat of glue. And then a coat of rubber.